Hey guys, Aaron here from Maven Analytics with a new question of the day in our Ask Maven series. Let's go check it out. This week, our question comes from Sarah, and Sarah's running into an issue trying to use standard time intelligence functions with a custom calendar. She says, I work for a retail company and we use a 454 custom calendar. How can I handle month to month time intelligence expressions to work with a different calendar than the standard one? To dig into this question, we're gonna to need to understand two types of calendars, Gregorian calendars and custom calendars. So let's head over to Power BI Desktop and we're gonna check this out. So for this example, I'm going to use the Maven Roasters data model that we created in the advanced DAX course. So checking out the data model here, you'll notice that I have two different calendar tables. I have a standard calendar table, also known as a Gregorian calendar, and a 454 calendar table. We all know what the standard calendar table looks like, but what's the deal with this custom calendar table? Well, custom 445 and 454 calendars do a couple of things. First, they standardize the number of days in each week to seven, and then they standardize the number of weeks in each year to 52. If you look at the calendar here, we have four weeks, four weeks, and then five weeks. So this is a 445 calendar. But there are a couple of downsides when using these calendars. First, they don't have standard start and stop dates. And second, they can't be used with standard time intelligence functions. Houston, we have a problem. All right, so what do we do now? Well, this is where our custom calendar fields and our friend DAX come into play. So here we've got our 454 calendar, and we're looking at this from our data view. And first things first, just like all calendars, we've got this date column here, right? And we have to have a date column that represents all of the dates that are contained within our data tables. Second, our 454 custom calendar has a bunch of added fields that compute things like fiscal year, fiscal quarter, our fiscal month number, and so on. These columns are really what makes this all possible and are the key components here. So let's jump over to our reporting view and we'll take a look at what we've got to do. Here, I have two matrices, one that is set up based on the standard calendar and the other that is set up based on a custom 454 calendar. I've also added the same month to date sales and previous month sales measures to both tables. Now note here that these measures are actually built off of my standard calendar table. So everything looks good here in my standard calendar matrix, but things get a little bit crazy here when we look at the custom calendar table, right? These values for previous month sales don't really make sense. And month to date sales here doesn't show anything until the final two months of the year. So clearly not working here. So how do we fix this and help Sarah out? Well we need to write a couple of custom measures that use the custom columns from the 454 calendar table so that we can look at month to date sales and previous month sales. So let's remove these measures from the custom calendar table and add in the right ones. To save a little bit of time here, I actually went and pre-built out these measures first. So let's first add in our month to date sales for our 454 calendar. If we scroll up to the top here, you can see now that we're actually getting the correct month to date sales here, right? We see that it's summing up the previous day's sales to arrive at that month to date total. So this is working great here. If we click into this measure, we've got a little bit of DAX here. Up top, we're defining the max date and the maximum date period for each fiscal month for a given year. And then this is a great place to use variables. Once those are set, we're using our good friend Calculate to evaluate customer sales in a new context where the date is less than or equal to the max date and the fiscal month year is equal to the max period. Boom, we've got our month to date sales. So things look good here. The next measure that we need to add is for last month sales. So we'll come over here, we're gonna add previous month sales, 454 calendar, we'll expand this. And you can see here, that we return the previous month sales, 78, 130, 116, 806. So everything looks great. We go down to the February, so this is the first month of 2018, and you can see that our total here 
aligns with the total for January 2017. So everything looks great there. We take a look at our DAX here. It's a little bit more complicated to write. Again, we're using calculate, but this time we're returning a virtual table using filter that's looking at a couple of scenarios. The first scenario we're solving for is how to handle the first month of a new fiscal year, because here we want to return the last month from the previous year. And the second scenario returns the previous month sales when the current fiscal month number doesn't equal one. And there you go. We've now created two measures to help Sarah out with her custom calendar problem. All right, so what do you think? Have you run into any other custom calendaring challenges in the past? If you have, I'd love to hear how you solved them. Also, if this is your first time visiting the Maven YouTube channel, be sure to hit subscribe below so you can stay up to date on all the new videos that we're gonna be releasing. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, or maybe two. All right, until next time, learn on.